Now, as some of you have asked me for some time, yes, my series titled Dark Origins will soon continue with part three. And I am well aware this has been a long time coming. It's been about a year. There's a few reasons for that. However, I decided that one section of that video would work well and very likely be helpful as a separate video, which is why today we have unusually something of a preview while we discuss the troubling issue that is known as Chronostrife. And this has fairly major implications for both our current, previous and future understandings of events in the 40k galaxy. Chrono Strife is a situation that emerged in the Imperium after the return of Primarch Gulliman and the emergence of what is known as the Great Rift. Now this was described in both Dark Imperium and Vigilus Defiant and is a hidden internal conflict happening right now within the Imperium. Chronostrife began after Ultramarine's Primarch Gulliman, now Lord Commander of the Imperium, began attempts to collect some sense of order to the disordered and disintegrating historical timeline of the Imperium. An empire which having been left for thousands of years to lead itself was basically coming apart at the seams upon his return, it was stagnating, regressing and generally just deteriorating. Glimmon wanted to gather as much knowledge and history as possible from the Imperium and also to reform the Imperial Calendar. He hoped to be able to create a sense of order and understanding and perhaps re-establish a reliable Imperial history. Not the first time such a thing has been attempted, we also know around the time of the Siege on Terror, various high-level Imperials wanted to try their best to form something of a well-established record. However, through the novel Saturnine, we basically learned that this failed miserably, and if anything it only further embedded the notion that nothing can be trusted within the Imperium's history, especially as to its authenticity. In fact, many things are not just misreported, but are actively distorted to alter their perception. We know this, of course, because of the Inquisition, and this heavily undermines our ability to really know much of anything within the Imperium. We might assume events took place, but who was truly at fault? What was the outcome or the overall resolution? And this should all generally be regarded with a level of scepticism. In fact, within Dark Imperium, we learn deeply about just how disordered and broken the process of record keeping in the Imperium is. It describes how comparative and corroborative analytical techniques had given way to the recording of gossip, hearsay and folklore. All was liberally mixed with complete works of fabrication, Imperial interference in redacting chronicles, misguidedly or not, and this had further destroyed much of the past. War had eradicated the histories of entire worlds, much knowledge had been burned by zealous inquisitors, often in order to suppress a single uncomfortable truth. If anything, the state of mankind's knowledge was worse than it was back after the Unification Wars. It also notes that knowledge of the warp's true nature had been suppressed, but patchily so. The great deception the Emperor had practiced had become impossible to sustain, though this had not stopped the Inquisition from trying. Knowledge of demons and the dark gods was forbidden, but many innocents had paid the ultimate price for accidentally learning the truth. It's even said that Gulliman faced opposition from the Inquisition to his attempts to try and restore a more accurate process of recording details ongoing in the Imperium. And this speaks to the true and completely insane nature of the Imperium in M41, that even when you have a Primarch, one of the Emperor's sons, return to lead the Imperium, the Inquisition actively resists attempts to have them perform their role more effectively. The Imperium had become basically so fractured, so ideologically divided on many levels, that it's almost in a permanent state of cold civil war with itself. Gulliman would to this end create the Logos Historica Verita, and these numbered many hundreds of specially trained archivists and researchers, thousands of support staff utilising long dead academic arts. They attempted the impossible, the construction of a reliable history of the Imperium, and against great odds, small cells of the Logos searched out ancient records. At their presentation of the Primarch's seal, forbidden vaults were opened and emptied, their contents copied and dispatched to Gulliman's Crusade wherever it was. Logos work was a torturous, dangerous affair, war zones engulfed half the galaxy, and historical teams sometimes disappeared into them without a trace. Through their work though, this was how Gulliman learned of what is known as the Chronostrife of Terror. And this was apparently just one of thousands of secret conflicts conducted by rival factions in the Imperium. 
The Chronostrife was a bitter, ongoing internal war within the Order Chronos over the Imperium's dating system, and what he read made him despair. During the Great Crusade and the Heresy, the standard dating system had provided some idea of the order of events over time, but like everything else the Emperor had created, the calendar had become degraded by both dogmatic adherence and thoughtless revisionism. Various rival dating systems had evolved from the Imperial Standard, making a true chronicle of the galaxy almost impossible to construct. By the five main factional variants, Gilman calculated the current year to be anywhere between early M41 and even a millennium later, and that was leaving out numerous lesser, more heretical interpretations. Gullman had hoped to find some solution to the Imperium's ruined dating system, but this was only then made more difficult by the chrono distortions being caused by now the Great Rift that had split the galaxy in two for any kind of universal dating system to be at all salvageable. Now, not unsurprisingly, this is not a topic that has been heavily described nor especially discussed by Games Workshop authors, and only Aaron Dembski Bowden has thankfully given us some solid insight. And a very useful description from ADB was as follows. He said, If you ever find yourself guilty of looking at the warp dismissively as an annoyance that complicates things, well, you're in for a rough time. This is a setting where contact between worlds, when the galaxy is even at its smoothest, is largely limited to a psychic person in a heavily politicised guild interpreting the dreams of another psychic person, possibly from an entirely other culture, in an equally politicised guild, and hoping they understand them right, because that's what astropathy is. And where getting from one place to another place involves literally sailing through the underworld of human mythology and hoping the dreams of a psychic person in a machine coffin protect you on the way, that demons don't eat you, and that you don't arrive 200 years after you set out through things that you just can't control. And with the degradation of information and the sheer number of cultures in the Imperium, I mean, we can't reliably tell what happened several hundred years ago on Earth, now multiply those cultures by X dozen millionfold, spread them over a million planets that don't speak the same languages, or even have the same cultures, or often even know the others exist, some of which sometimes get cut off by the warp as part of whole lost regions, etc. And so in this quote from ADB, what we can see is that essentially what it comes down to, and this is fairly critical to my whole thinking now, is that within 40k we largely are told things, as we know, from the perspective of the Imperium. This is why a lot of stuff that I have done before is framed from the perspective of the Imperium, because generally in 40k that is your perspective, we're seeing sort of through the eyes of the Imperium. So it's rare for us to see, for example, Imperial events being chronicled by the Eldar or the Necron. You don't see them often in 40k material listing their knowledge of humans or dates or counts and things like this. The vast majority of our knowledge comes from the reference perspective that's recorded history of the Imperium and humanity. Now the quite major but I think intentional downside to that is that it's so broken, distorted and manipulated that in many respects it's near enough to be kind of worthless. And that's even before you get to the fact that time is now being distorted apparently by the Great Rift as the warp overlaps with real space, making things perhaps more unclear than they ever were before. And so this is why Gulliman concluded that if he had any hope at all of rebuilding the Imperium, he would need to spend a significant effort in trawling through and basically distilling the entire history of the Imperium's thousands of years since his time in stasis into something where he was able to build some semblance of an established history before he could even begin to understand what to do moving forward. He found this to be far more difficult than he had anticipated as it was extremely disturbing just how poorly information had been recorded and that's not to mention it being clouded by extreme ideological or religious views that many of those who dared to offer alternate views were simply being incinerated, meaning he had no means of cross-referencing other than the surviving records preserved by whichever inquisitional or ministerial body had just prevailed. So this was a deeply depressing and exasperating situation in terms of establishing an accurate historical record marked out clearly with dates. Gilman essentially concluded this was now a hopeless endeavour. The history of the Imperium had been so fundamentally distorted and misreported by those within the Imperium who had ulterior motives and now spent thousands of years manipulating it either deliberately or just through inaccuracy that it was as if the Imperium had in some respects suffered a second age of strife from an archival perspective. 
What this all means for us in real terms is that despite some people's very understandable desire for specific dates to events and figures within the Imperial timeline, including those of the most recent events, these could very easily have a margin of error that ranges as much as a thousand years either way, and that's before we consider the recording of events going forward as things stand is going to be so difficult as to be almost irrelevant due to the Great Rift. So does this mean that in the current time it is not M42? Not necessarily. What it does mean though is that as ADB highlighted for us, it's fairly impossible to tell, and so for all true intents and purposes, it is still M41, at least from the author's perspective. Like many things, there's definitely a strong element of subjective interpretation here, but that is equally true for a large quantity of things in the 40k verse. And this all comes back to what I've said all along, that things are not set in stone. And the very nature of the 40k verse makes an ordinary concept of canonicity that you might apply to another verse completely irrelevant. If there is no reliable metric to establish a timeline, which is very clearly shown now to be the case, this means there is no way for us to be able to reliably state things happened at all. And as I've noted before, I can understand the frustration for this, and things would be easier for me if it was all neatly laid out. But it is simply the nature of the beast that is 40k. And I made my piece long ago with the fact that some things change, some things stay the same, because it's a very, very muddy galaxy and it's very difficult to say just what we know at any given time. For some individuals, it's hard to say even how much they know themselves, likely looking at yourself, Belisarius Core. What's most important to understand about all of this is that even before the Great Rift, the Imperium of Man's empire was so vast that the interstellar distances it covered already prohibited any truly accurate reflection of time and space, and just because some things are given an arbitrary date based on whatever was thought to be correct at the time does not necessarily make it so. After the opening of the Great Rift, near every active Imperial war zone had to devise and reinforce its own chronological system. The administrative bureaucracy of the Imperium had previously and ignorantly assumed that they could rely on their former dating system of old based on a set point where the first digit of each timestamp indicated its veracity. But because the Imperium was so stagnating and incapable of truly studying any real system with accuracy, it became easier and easier for dates and times to lose all meaning between star systems. Gulliman attempted to resolve this, involving both his Historators and the Order Kronos, decreeing that no single logic could be any longer applicable with regards to time and space within the Imperium. Essentially, he, as I noted, came to realise that there was no longer a universal metric that could be applied to coordinate the bureaucracy of the Imperium and record the events within it, beyond doing so in a far more localised fashion. Now this does very obviously create a tremendous amount of problems for the Imperium, although it's worth considering that this had technically already been the case. It's just that previously they believed that they were accurately recording things and responding to them in something of a logically coherent manner when this was simply not the case. This is why, for example, some planets became barren husks before aid was even able to reach them due to the delay between requests to and from worlds across the Imperium. It's just now the problems of this are exacerbated by the Great Rift. Its chrono-warping effects might not have reached the furthest planets at the galaxy's edge, but its psychic echoes and the weakness or total lack of the Astronomicon here meant that they were still felt profoundly on even distant worlds from the Rift. It was stated even that the Rift was affecting chrono slates and data webs of the Adeptus Mechanicus. So the Great Rift truly has had a very severe impact on the logistical structure of the Imperium in M41. Now a small aside, these emanations from the rift tear in space between the Materium and Immaterium were in fact so powerful they're said to have burned its image into the retinas of humans who looked upon it for too long and even created the appearance of birthmarks upon newborns. So the emergence of the Great Rift is a very disturbing and unknown quantity and even now having very profound effects on the galaxy and citizens of the Imperium. As interesting as all of this is though, what significant understanding or application can we take from this knowledge? Well for one thing we can consider one established truth, that the nature of time is even more unclear than we may have thought previously, and not simply in how it's being used for historical recordings within the Imperium, but quite literally in the sense of it being distorted by the warp as it infringes on real space. This is considerably problematic, as it makes any deeper conclusions 
even more challenging. And with that said, when we do get to talking about bigger concepts such as the nature of causality, which perspectives of time we want to accept, the eternal existence of chaos gods, time travel existing, which unfortunately does appear to be the case in 40k based on multiple sources at this point, and then simply the fact that just by the nature of travelling in and around the galaxy itself, and the means by which that happens for different factions, allows us to realise, perhaps unsurprisingly, that reaching solid conclusions becomes ever more remote. I think quite obviously this is also no great surprise when we are considering things like the nature of the warp, but it's certainly still enjoyable to lay it all out and see if you can make any of the puzzle pieces fit. The internal struggle of Chronostrife is undoubtedly ongoing. It seems unlikely that Robert Gulliman would be unsuccessful in his efforts to eventually form some more rational system for managing Imperial timelines, even if currently with the Great Rift this has become near impossible. Although we cannot say by any metric that the Imperium is currently in M42, you also cannot really say that it isn't. What we can say though is that we are more certainly likely to be still in M41. There are many references which essentially back this up, not to mention that in some of the current books they do not explicitly state they're in M42. It's true that some wiki state this, but it's not actually stated in these books. References to M42 are simply people having logical lines of thinking based on the fact that the Indomitus Crusade was meant to have spanned several hundred years and I myself had made this error previously. But now though, we cannot say this definitively, not now or likely in the near future either. Lastly, I think one could very obviously make some disingenuous argument about this entire situation, and that you could either take it straight at face value or speculate it has more corporate undertones. But my personal perspective here is that even if this were the case, this is certainly one of the most creative means of allowing the narrative of a verse to move forward while simultaneously retaining it within its core brand framework. A mixture of the law's internal deliberate obfuscation combined with a major event which absolutely obliterates any ability to accurately monitor time is no less than a sledgehammer down upon those who would attempt to try and create something of a coherent timeline. Either way, somehow we have to try and blithely continue onward in our own way, arranging it all like some burned pieces of torn up notepaper. I think I might finish for now by simply stating as the Emperor himself once said, the shining path is lost to us. Now we rage against the dying of the light. <laughs>